Deborah and I want to welcome you to this TonyKemp.net ministry. I want to talk to you about supernatural foundations. For those of you who want to have a supernatural life in Jesus, and maybe even a supernatural ministry, it is well with you if you develop supernatural foundations. And when I talk about supernatural foundations, I'm talking about being grounded in the Word of God, having a strong personal relationship with Jesus, having genuine fellowship with God the Father, and a real communion with the Holy Spirit. And so I want to talk to you about supernatural foundations, because your life is built upon foundations. And so I want to share with you how you can grow up in Jesus Christ and how you can come into the fullness of Jesus. And so if you have your Bible, <clears throat> I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 6. When you turn to Hebrews chapter 6, you will find that the Hebrew writer, which I believe to be the Apostle Paul, talks about the pathway to progress. The Apostle Paul teaches how to grow up in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in Hebrews chapter 6, beginning with verse 1, you have this word. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Now in the original language he's saying here, let us move now from the word of the beginning of Christ. In other words, the doctrines that are about to be shared show you how Christ begins in your life. And he says, let us go on to perfection or to maturity. And what the apostle is saying here is unless you walk through these sequential steps, you will not come to Gen, uh, genuine maturity. And this is the way you must walk, the things you must learn, the principles you must practice to grow up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Here he says, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, of faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. So let me begin to talk with you about these supernatural foundations. Now allow me to say this to you. If you, if you ever go on to Tony Kemp uh, Ministries .net, the website, you will see that I have something called the School of the Supernatural. And that's uh, 10 DVDs. It's really about 20 different messages uh, where I show people uh, how to move in the supernatural. Now, I've been blessed to see souls saved by the Lord Jesus. I have witnessed the blind instantly seeing, the deaf instantly hearing. I've witnessed the, the lame and the crippled to walk, the paralyzed to be healed. I've seen tumors and growths disappear, cancers disappear, sugar diabetes healed. I've seen creative miracles. I've seen God do all kinds of miracles. And you can learn how to move in the supernatural. You can have a supernatural life in Jesus through intimacy with God. And you can have a supernatural ministry through Jesus. Again, because of your intimacy with God. But in order for you to move into the supernatural, a supernatural life and a supernatural ministry, you must first have supernatural foundations. So before you uh, go online and get the school of the supernatural and learn the revelation of God's word to move in the supernatural, you must first have supernatural foundations. And so I have seen uh, rain fall uh, in a place where there was drought um, supernaturally through prayer. I, I have seen uh, the dead raised to life on three different occasions. Again, moving in the supernatural power of Jesus Christ. And one key is intimacy with God through the Lord Jesus. But again, 
if you're going to have the kind of in intimacy with God I'm talking about, it's going to require supernatural foundations. And so what I want to say to you is this. Learn the Word of God and put the Word of God into practice. Now, allow me to share this with you because it's very, very important. In uh, 2006, I was in the state of Louisiana. I was in uh, Monroe, Louisiana, in fact, uh, staying in the home of a friend of mine. I was going to be doing some preaching there. And uh, I had an angelic visitation, and this angel told me that I would be preaching uh, about repentance. And um, there was something else that the angel said to me at that time, uh, but I will share that uh, in another message. But repentance is very, very important. And before I talk to you about the doctrine of repentance, because you understand growing up in Jesus requires that you learn a sequence of truths and that a doctrine is a truth. It's a way of life that you put into practice. And notice the order. First repentance, then faith. In other words, you can't have genuine faith until you've practiced genuine repentance. Then after that, you are to be baptized in water. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Lord Jesus. Amen. And you are to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and baptized in fire. Then you let, learn about the laying on of hands for healing, uh, to expel demon spirits, to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to uh, move people or help people or impart spiritual gifts. And then you understand the doctrine of the resurrection from the dead how the righteous dead are raised to life, and then the sinners are, are, are raised to life. And the righteous dead uh, go to glory and get the reward, and the sinners who are raised um, go to uh, hell, the lake of fire, and how there is eternal judgment. And so all of these truths need to be learned, they need to be understood, and, and this is the way into maturity. Allow me to say now, there was a woman that I uh, know uh, she was seeking the Lord Jesus very intently, and she was an older woman, and she wanted to make, be, be sure that she was ready to meet God. And so she began to pray and say, Lord, what do I need to do so that I'm ready to meet you? And she goes to bed one night, and she has a vision. Now, Acts chapter 2, verse 17, said, God speaks, and he says, uh, and Peter's actually the one quoting Job. And Peter says in his preaching, it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And so this older woman began to have a dream or a vision. And she was in church in this dream vision. And the Lord Jesus literally walked up to her. And this is what the Lord Jesus said to her. He said, what I want from you is what I want from everyone. First, bring me the fruit of repentance. Second, practice right living or holiness every day. And third, develop intimacy with me. And he asked her if she would do this, and she said yes. And then Jesus acted like the great high priest that he is, because remember, he intercedes for you in the presence of God the Father. And Jesus laid his hand, and he prayed for her. He prayed to the Father for her. Then she saw Jesus walk up to other people in church and say the same three things and ask them to make a commitment. Allow me to say this to you. Whenever you're given a revelation by God, you must respond to it positively. And then when you obey that revelation, you get the biblical, scriptural, promised results. Well, let's now examine this doctrine of repentance according to the word of the Lord. And allow me to have you turn now to the book of Acts, and let's see what the book of Acts has to show us and has to teach us that we may learn from. Here in the book of Acts, chapter 20, I will begin with verse uh, 20, and it's the testimony of the Apostle Paul as he's talking to the church there. He's talking to the leaders and elders at Ephesus. And he says, I kept back nothing that was profitable to you, 
But I have showed you and taught you publicly and from house to house. Now this is the key because really in ministry we are to teach people in the temple or in the church. But we're also to, supposed to teach people the word of God from house to house. So we need to have uh, meetings of celebration in the temple of God. These are regular meetings. For example, Wednesday night services or Sunday morning services or Sunday night services. But sometimes we need to teach people in their homes where the, set, the, uh, the, uh, the setting is much more intimate. And he says, I taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks, repentance toward God. See, his first doctrine is repentance. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the order. First repentance and then faith. Now let's turn to uh, the book of Luke, chapter 24. And here Jesus has been crucified. Jesus has been resurrected. Jesus has appeared to his disciples. And he is speaking to them in um, Luke 24. And here's what he says in verse uh, 46. And thus it is written, and thus it behooves the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission or forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. The first message that Jesus said is to be preached is the message of repentance. And so the early church, the early apostles, followed the teaching of Jesus, the pattern of Jesus. They taught the principles of the word of God that caused people to grow and progress in Jesus Christ and to have intimacy with God the Father, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And so now I want to take the time to teach you this first very important doctrine, the doctrine of repentance. Because once you learn repentance, once you practice repentance in your personal life, you will have great intimacy with God, great intimacy with the Father, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and you'll have a supernatural life. And when God wills, you'll move in supernatural ministry. So now, let me have you turn to the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 1. And let's look at what happens there. In Mark chapter 1, we see that it is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the first thing that happens is that there is a voice crying in the desert, John the Baptist. We see this in chapter 1, verse 2. And notice what John's message is, because he's making a straight way for the Lord. And he uh, is preparing the people to receive Jesus the Messiah. And it says in verse 4 that John did baptize in the wilderness or the desert, and he preached a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So what prepared the people to receive Jesus was a message of repentance. And it's very interesting that the Word of God says in John 1 verse 9, and it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth and of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are the son of my love, the one in whom I'm well pleased. Of course, Jesus is then led by the spirit of God into the wilderness and into the desert. And he was there 40 days and 40 nights. A tempted of Satan, he was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to Jesus. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel, that is the good news, of the kingdom of God, which is the domain of God, saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Notice, Jesus first preached repentance, and then he said after that, Believe. This is the first message. Very shortly, I'm going to give you the message on Supernatural Foundations, Part 2.